Welcome to ILTV's Israel Daily. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and coming up in today's newscast, we'll take a look at how Israeli leaders, celebrities, and locals alike are celebrating the first night of Hanukkah. For the first time in history, an African Israeli woman will be graduating from Israel's elite pilots course, and a new Israeli invention may be able to literally zap your migraine away. It is the first day of Hanukkah, and last night we lit our first candle on the menorah. So we're going to start out the show today with a little bit of fun. Joining me in the studio is ILTV Shanna Fold, and she has some pictures and videos of famous celebs and leaders who are taking part in the festivities. So Shanna, what do you have for us? Well, first of all, happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. And I think we should give a little bit of detail about what Hanukkah is. Yes. We celebrate when the Maccabees, which were the people or the ancient Hebrews living in Jerusalem at the time, took back Jerusalem from the Greek Syrians during the time of the rededication of the Second Temple. And they had enough oil to light what was supposed to be one candle, and they were able to keep that candle lit for eight days. Exactly. And that's why we light it. All um, right, so, yeah. so last night... The Israeli Prime Minister, or King Bibi as they call him, finally uh, lit the first candle, right? Can yes. You, we have visuals of that. Look at that. So he lit the candle with the U.S. Ambassador David Friedman, which was very exciting. And it's always nice to see this. It's, so, it's a moment of coming together. Also, President Rivlin rit, uh, lit the candle in Jerusalem in the Old City. Oh, there and he, he thanked all of the police officers for their hard work in keeping the Old City safe, which is not an easy task. It is not an easy task. All right. And so... You know, we love celebrating Hanukkah because we get the chance to eat donuts and to light candles instead of crying and fasting and staying away from carbs like we typically have to do in most of our holidays. Um, and I understand there were also some celebrities worldwide who wanted to take part yeah, in so the festivities, this is, right? This is a fun holiday, which is why I think everybody loves it. Now, my first favorite celebrity of the day is Drake. There is a very casual photo of him sitting so down, casual. having a drink, playing some dreidel. And I say, I think, you know, dreidel used to be a gambling game for the Jews while they were hiding out in the caves. Uh, I think that Drake has a few dollars to put down on the table for it. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I think he has, <laughs> has more than a few dollars, if we're being honest with each other. And he wasn't the only one, right? There were also um, pictures from outer space, too. So I loved these photos. So th these photos are from Jessica Mayer, and she is a Jewish-American astronaut. I think we're all very proud of her. And look at these cool so Hanukkah socks that she has here. All right, I think that she might have beat everybody when it comes to celebrating Hanukkah. She sure did, all the way from outer space. Now, I wish that I could show all of the Hanukkah photos that we found, but um, we don't have the time. So enjoy some celebrities that you might recognize in this video. now to some harder news. The Israeli government has just announced that it will be classifying its, del its deliberations about the International Criminal Court's upcoming investigation into alleged war crimes in the Palestinian territories. This comes after even more Israeli outrage following reports that the ICC allegedly avoided meeting with Israeli organizations before announcing the probe, but did in fact meet with Palestinian groups several times. <laughs> ביום שישי נתבשרנו שגזרות חדשות מוטלות על העם היהודי. גזרות אנטישמיות של בית הדין הבינלאומי, שבא ואומר לנו היהודים שעומדים פה ליד הקיר הזה, ליד ההר הזה, בעיר הזאת, בארץ הזאת, שאין לנו זכות לחיות פה ושאם אנחנו חיים פה אנחנו מבצעים פשע מלחמה. אנטישמיות לשמה, אנחנו לא נרכין ראש מול העוולה הזאת, מול האבסורד הזה, 
ואנחנו נילחם בה בכל הכלים. That's what Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu had to say following the International Criminal Court's announcement. The probe will look into Israel's policy of Jewish settlement in Judea and Samaria or the West Bank, the 2014 Gaza War, and the Israeli response to violent Palestinian protests on the Gaza Strip border. The ICC says it will also be investigating Hamas's targeting of civilians and use of its own people as human shields during war. But Israeli officials are calling the entire investigation a political tool that exposes the ICC's bias against Israel. Prior to the announcement of the impending investigation, the Pro-Israel International Association of Jewish Lawyers and Jurists reportedly attempted to contact ICC Chief Prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda to share legal documents fighting the case, but failed to receive any response. Yet just two weeks ago, Ben Souda allegedly met with representatives of the Palestinian Center for Human Rights. Top Israeli officials and military brass could face prosecution in this investigation, and the Israeli Foreign Ministry is now hosting a meeting to discuss how to respond to the probe. All deliberations will be classified. Syrian state media is now claiming that Israel has fired missiles at Damascus last night, but Israel has not responded to the reports. Three explosions. That's what the UK-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights is claiming was heard in the suburbs of Damascus, after what they're claiming was an Israeli attempt last night to hit Syrian regime and Iranian positions. The Israeli news site Ynet is reporting that the alleged Israeli airstrike was targeting arms warehouses in the suburb of Saida Zainab, which is just south of the Syrian capital. Syrian air defenses reportedly shot down one of the missiles in the air. This latest report comes just two weeks after unidentified aircraft bombed three Iranian-controlled weapons depots in Syria, killing several members of Iranian-supported militias. There were no immediate reports of who was responsible for the attack, but defense analysts claim that it was likely Israel. The IDF does not typically comment on specific airstrikes in Syria unless they come in retaliation for an attack on Israel. But the Israeli military has admitted to carrying out hundreds of airstrikes in Syria against Iranian targets over the last several years. Iran has proxy groups based in Syria and Lebanon and supports Hezbollah and Gaza terrorists. Now, this may sound shocking in 2019, given all the access to information that we have, but the smoking rate in Israel uh, seems to be on the rise despite anti-smoking campaigns across the country. Almost 20% of Israelis between 16 to 74 smoke. And joining us now to discuss why is Dr. Yael Ben Zaev, a public health physician who works with the Israeli Association for Smoking Cessation and Prevention. So I might have exaggerated a little bit when I said the numbers are rising, but they certainly did in the last year. Can you talk to us a little bit about why we're seeing so many Israelis continuing to smoke today? Well, the truth is that the numbers are basically been the same for the last decade, okay. and we're not seeing them going down. So they've gone down pretty steadily around the years. So in the in 1980s, we had about 40% of smoking, so they've been going down pretty steadily. Okay. And then we're pretty much in the same place. Now we have to understand that smoking is an addictive behavior. So people start smoking when they're very young, when they don't understand how highly addictive it is, and then they just continue because they can't stop. Right, but I mean, in other parts of the world, there is, I, certainly a lot of information being uh, distributed about how bad this, this habit is for you, yet here in Israel we still have 19% of the population that is smoking. So is there another factor here that we're yes. missing? So there's, so there's a lot of measures that you can do in order to tackle smoking, so it's a very complex problem. It's not one solution fits all. And we basically in Israel haven't done what is needed to do in the past few years. We have had really good legislation just passed a year ago, which I hope in the next few years we'll see it, that smoking rates are lowering. But in the past decade, we haven't had anything. So taxes have not been increasing, which is what is the, I would consider the number one reason that would lower smoking right, rates. Right, people just don't uh, want to pay Ban on money. advertising and sponsorship. So we've only been able to do that right now, but right. up till now it hasn't been. So speaking of that, there's been a, bad on, a ban on advertising uh, cigarettes, and we're also seeing now these kind of black boxes, so you can't tell what brand you're, you're smoking. Uh, when you're smoking, obviously you can select when you buy them, but others can't tell what you're smoking. Has that had any type of impact? Or? So this is actually part of that new legislation, yeah. but it's only going into effect from January, um, of a, from January 8th. So okay. it hasn't actually gone into effect. We were starting to see this in point of sales because the companies are starting to exchange their stock, right. but it, they're only gonna have to sell this from January 8th. So we're expected to see 
the sort of the effect only in about a year or two. But this is one of the sort of the major advances in tobacco control in the latest years. It started with Australia and other countries have implemented this. It's called plain packaging, but also with graphic warnings. In Israel, unfortunately, the Ministry of Health opposed graphic warnings, right. so we only have textual warnings. So right. we're not sure how much of the effect this will have compared to other countries, for example. Now, speaking about advertising, I mean, there are some who say that advertising truly hasn't been banned for cigarettes. Can you kind of delve into that a little bit? Yes, yeah, so there is sort of, there's supposed to be a total ban, but one of the things, unfortunately, that we didn't, weren't able to do was the fact that it, we couldn't ban advertising in print media. Mm -hmm. So Israel is one of the few countries, Western countries, that is still allowed to have ads in print media. Yeah. Also, there's a lot of um, sort of uh, concealed advertising. So we still see a lot of smoking in movies, in TV uh, shows. Um, we see them now coming up in video games. There's a lot of direct advertising, a lot of sponsorship for uh, sports events and stuff like that. So there's yeah. still a lot of advertising that isn't sort of what you'd see like a billboard. You yeah. don't have any billboards, but there, you still see smoking everywhere. Well. It's just, it's very, very interesting um, that there's such a high rate of smoking in this country, especially given how uh, advanced it is. But thank you so much for joining us and kind of giving us some background as, as to why that is the case. Thank you very much. All right, now get this. For the first time in Israeli Air Force history, a woman from the Ivory Coast is graduating from the elite pilots course in the IDF. And ILTV's Nitney Manson has the scoop. She's getting her wings so that she can fly. And it hasn't been easy. Wearing dark shades on her helmet, Lieutenant T, as the media is calling her, is becoming the first woman from the Ivory Coast to graduate from pilot school. And she gets the certificate in just two days' time at the Hatzor Air Force Base in central Israel, where she will soon start her position as an air crew member in the transport squadron. The event will be attended by Israeli Prime Minister, Defense Minister, the IDF Chief of Staff, and the Air Force Commander. Lieutenant T grew up in a religious family in Jerusalem with immigrant parents. Her father came to Israel from the Ivory Coast in West Africa, and her mother immigrated to Israel from France. Today, Lieutenant T is graduating as the only woman in the 179th Pilots course, something she thought would be impossible. <laughs> This news follows another recent breakthrough which came to attention in September when Lieutenant Colonel G, as she's called, became the first woman to lead an Air Force squadron. In 1949, Israel's army became the first to introduce mandatory service for both men and women. And in 1951, Yael Rom became Israel's first female pilot before women were barred from taking the course. In 1993, Israeli Alice Miller sued the military for her right to enlist in the Air Force and was able to lawfully reopen the course to women. Now, despite more and more women finding opportunity in the Israeli military, Israel has just plummeted in its gender equality ranking. The Jewish state has dropped 18 spots in the world ranking of gender over the past two years, according to the World Economic Forum. And joining us to discuss is Dr. Shlomit Lir, a researcher at the Center for Israel Studies at Ben Gurion University. So let's talk to us. About, I mean, I want to just understand how we could drop so significantly in such little time. Well, it's two things. One thing is that uh, countries around the world are advancing. We see much more women in politics. We see greater representation of women in a higher position. Well, in Israel, we are not doing that. We even are going backwards with only 23% Knesset members. So that's one thing. The second major thing is uh, women wages in Israel right. also are going backwards. We dropped 1% uh, in relation to last year. And so I just kind of want to add a stat in there. Women make 65 to 68% of their male co-workers pay. That's a, a statistic mm -hmm. here. 68%, well. right. right. Which is, it's, it's pretty shocking, that, it is. that difference. Right. Why does that happen? Well, it's a phenomenon all over the world. But I think one thing for sure is that there's not enough that's been done to change the situation in so many ways. Starting with, like, even education of two caregivers, two, I mean, most of the work at home is done by women. And uh, so women work twice. They work at home, they work outside the home, and often they take uh, jobs that allow them to be more with their children. That's one thing. Uh, there's great... Uh, um, but, but don't the statistics talk about 
people, uh, women compared to their male counterparts in, in similar positions. Right, so, right. I mean, for, Even in about similar positions, we yeah. see this phenomenon and uh, we see women uh, making less money than men at the same job. Even uh, when we compare hourly uh, works, we can see women are earning 15% less than so, men. So what can be done to change this? Education to begin with education and really uh, changing the whole workforce and encouraging women to ask more yeah. and to sue their employers if they're not paying them the same amount as their co-workers. Interesting. Okay. It's funny that you say education because I, and more specifically in, in terms of teaching women themselves how to to react to situations which they don't feel like they're being properly respected or, or properly paid. But are there any but other... women are not to blame for the situation, right. obviously. It's a whole, it's a worldwide phenomenon, but Israel is lagging behind, which is very, very troubling, and uh, not enough is being done. Obviously, women have to take steps and change mm -hmm. the situation and protest against it and do whatever they can personally and as a group. Right. But at the same time, we expect the government, we, we, accept, uh, we expect the Ministry of uh, Finance to, to change the situation. Right, to step up. Right. Yeah, well, I think it's, you know, it's interesting because Israel is one of the first nations in the world to have a female prime minister. Uh, we, and yes, I know you nod your head. At, you're, it's, a you're one, saying, it's one woman. I mean, right. you, it, it, it takes a village. Of course it takes a village. And you but need I to think see more the women. The most important thing is that mm -hmm. that conversation even exists here, and that's important in of itself. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. All right, now, if you have ever suffered from a migraine, then you know it's no joke. And now an Israeli company has a device that could zap the pain right out of your head. That may sound far-fetched, but research companies have just named the technology one of the game changers of the year. 12% of the world suffers from migraines, and more than a million of them are Israeli. The debilitating headaches can be so painful that some are willing to do anything to get rid of them. And now an Israeli-made device called Nerivio may be the solution. The device is worn on the upper arm and provides migraine relief through neurotherapy, which alters nerve activity through targeted stimulus. The treatment is even personalized and offers an app that tracks your routine to help identify migraine triggers. Plus, the information can be automatically shared with doctors. The technology costs just around 99 bucks and has just been ranked one of the best inventions in 2019 by Time Magazine and one of the 36 game-changing companies by CB Insight in 2020. That's a research firm in New York that investigates tech and competition in the market. The founders of the Israeli company called Theranica that's behind the device say they wanted to offer the world a treatment for migraines that was drug-free. So it's no wonder that they're making headlines. managed to enjoy that pun at the end of the story. All right, now it looks like you'll have a new destination to visit on your next vacation to the Holy Land because get this, the first ever Druze cultural center in the entire world is being built in the north of Israel. So who are the Druze? Well, Druze communities exist today in Israel, Syria, Lebanon, and Jordan. And here in the Holy Land, there are 143,000 Druze people, which makes this community an ethnic minority. Now, the Druze faith is an interpretation of six religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Buddhism, Greek philosophy, and Persian Sufi. But the tenets of this unique religion are secret to outsiders, and you can't convert to the faith. And get this, the Druze don't have any set holidays or ceremonies because they're meant to be connected with God at all times. Now, here in Israel, the Druze aren't required to enter the Israeli military, but one in six do. And they're even Druze parliament members, so it's no surprise that the state wants to celebrate their contributions to Israeli society. Now, there are some privately owned Druze cultural centers, but this 30 million shekel investment shows that the state is committed to preserving the Druze community. And the center will tout a library with an archive of information about the group, plus it will even include a research center that will delve more into the people's heritage and history. All right, guys, I hope you're ready because Adam Sandler is back on the big screen. And this time, the Jewish American star is playing a more dramatic role than some may be used to. And 
There are some who even say it may win him an Academy Award. While well, ILTV's Emmanuel Gadosh is here with the details. Emmanuel. Hey, Natasha. So the film called Uncut Gems is all anyone has been talking about, both in Hollywood and on social media for the last few weeks. For those who saw it, they say that it's the most dynamic and high-energy film coming out this season and that it's almost aggressively Jewish. Aggressively Jewish. Yes, That's the, interesting. Yes. The project has been in the works for years now by Jewish filmmaker brothers Josh and Benny Safdie. Now, I don't think I've seen Adam Sandler playing such a serious and action film right. role, but it's pretty on brand that his character would be Jewish. What yes. is this movie about? All right, so Sandler plays the role of Howard Ratner, a charismatic jeweler and gambling addict in New York City's Diamond District, always looking for his next big score and gets a little too in over his head with loan sharks. Uh. The movie follows as he has to retrieve an extremely expensive gem in order to pay off his debts. It's an action-filled movie that I can seriously say that I'm so excited to see. Take a look at the clip of a trailer. You're taking my money all over town, placing bets. I'm having very serious second thoughts. Are you serious right now? I know I f***ed up. Howard, where's the money right now? Howard, got my money? Howard! Howard. Is it too late? I'm done. That means nothing. It meant nothing. Please. Give me another shot. I just, it is so strange to see Adam Sandler in a serious role, but I, I want to I wanna see this. I, I know, I know. It, it's, it looks really good. But even our Wonder Woman Gal Gadot is talking about it. She already got to see the film in advance and posted on Instagram saying the filmmakers might have found a new way to make a new genre and that it was, quote, so effective, original, and deep. Of course, she mentioned how amazing Adam Sandler was in it because, you know, there's no denying that even from the trailer. So when is this officially out in theaters? All right, well, Israel is, as you know, always a few months yeah. behind newly released films. So we're definitely going to have to wait a bit longer. However, for those in the States, it's in select theaters right now and officially opens on Christmas. All right. Well, thank you for the tease and the update, Emmanuel. Of course. All right, let's take a look at the weather forecast. Today we're seeing sunny skies in Tel Aviv with a high of 67 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. And tomorrow should be even warmer with a high of 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 Celsius. But there is a 40% chance of rain on Tuesday night. So make sure to keep yourself dry. All right, since it is the second night of Hanukkah, Shana is back to help me light the candles. And it looks like you have a menorah from the street. There are a lot of Orthodox men handing these out, right? This is, in fact, a world-class street menorah. A world-class street <laughs> menorah. And for our viewers, just so you know, if you come to Israel during Hanukkah, there are often Orthodox uh, men on the street handing out Hanukkiahs or menorahs. Uh, to the masses, for they, those who don't have. They want to make sure that every single person lights a Hanukkah Exactly, here. which is what we're about to do. So let's light the second candle, Shanna. Let's light her up. You're a professional. I am. And then we start with the new one or the, uh, or the old one? I believe we start with the old one. Yeah. All right, so have you gotten any gifts for Hanukkah? You know, I have gotten a whole bunch of gifts from Hanukkah from a friend of mine who traveled around Europe and brought me something from each place that she went. Interesting. That is, uh, you know, my family, we never actually gave gifts. And here in Israel, it's not typical get, to have, you know, gifts on every night like they do in the United States. In the U.S., I, th I don't even know if that's a real custom, but people say that they get one gift every day of the eight days. But in my family, it yeah. didn't work like that. Yeah, it's, it's all about the Christmas presents, honestly. Let's be honest, because they're just yeah. jealous of all the people celebrating Let's make Christmas. up for it this year. All right. Well, thank you for lighting the candle, Shanda. Um, and before we let everybody go, it just wouldn't feel right if we didn't give you a bit of what's going viral in Israel. So if you thought Hanukkah couldn't get any better, take a look at this. Randomest video of all time, but I just love cats and the internet loves cats, so we'll, we'll let it roll. All right, that is it for today's news. Today's exchange rate is 3.47 shekels to the American dollar. For more news from ILTV, please like ILTV on Facebook and follow us on Instagram and subscribe to us on YouTube. I'm Natasha Kirchuk, and thanks for watching.